Welcome to the teaching learning session of sociology. In the lecture series of sociology, in last few lectures, we discussed about the class system, caste system, family, kinship, and marriage. In this lecture, we'll discuss about Dalit movement. Before starting a new topic that is the Dalit movement, let's quickly recap the few concepts of class, caste, family, kinship and marriage. The class system is a system of stratification of society on the basis of education, property, business or work. Social class is one of the most important concepts that sociologists discuss. There are two classical sociologists who are most important in the discussion about class, Karl Marx and Max Weber. In Indian society, caste and class as two different forms of social stratification and have often been found to overlap with each other. According to Yogendra Singh, that in India, class is often subsumed by caste, while caste is a, perceived as a hereditary group. A social class is a category of people who share a similar socioeconomic status in relation to other segments of their community or society. There are certain differences between class and caste. We discussed about these differences in our last lecture. Caste is based on the birth, while class is based on the birth, education and occupation. In general, there are 3000 castes and subcastes in India, whereas classes has subclasses based on different things. Caste is a closed group whereas class is an open group. Even sensitization is unable to change caste, whereas class can be changed successfully. Caste is hereditary, while class is not. Caste is a closed class. A child of a Brahmin will always be a Brahmin but there is no such thing in class. Status is inborn and ascribed in caste system, wherein class system, it is status is acquired and achieved. Kinship is a, is a universal institution and represents one of the basic social institutions. Kinship is a method which provides the framework of social relationships. Kinship means relationship of individual with the other members based either on marriage or blood ties. Kinship bonds are very strong and such ties are of fundamental importance in every society and all over the world. Family, marriage, kinship, these three institutions are of, are of the core for of all communities. Family is the basic social institution from which other social institutions have grown and developed. The word family has been taken from the Roman word familus, which means a servant and a Latin word familia, meaning household. The family is one of the most primary group in society. The family is a universal and the oldest among other social institutions. Religion, we discussed about the religion. A religion word comes from the Latin word religio, respect for what is sacred and religio 
to bind in the sense of an obligation. The term a religion describes various systems of beliefs and practices concerning what people determine to be sacred or spiritual. Throughout the history and in society across the world, leaders have used religious narratives, symbols, and traditions in an attempt to give more meaning to life and to understand the universe. Now we'll start with a new topic that is Dalit movement. In contemporary India, Dalits still bear the stigma of untouchability and continue to face dreadful socio-economic and cultural inequalities. Dalits are deprived of wealth, power, and social acceptability or the social status for generations. These days, Dalit is mostly confined to the administratively coined term scheduled caste. Officially, it includes scheduled tribes and other backward classes too. Britishers used SC, that is scheduled caste, for untouchables in 1935. And earlier, they used the term depressed castes in 1919. Commonly, Dalit is also used for all marginalized sections of the society, poor landless peasants, women, tribals, workers, and those exploited in the name of religion, politically, culturally, and economically. Dalit means members of the lowest caste. The downtrodden and an erstwhile untouchable caste. The term explains the process through which Dalit themselves recognized that they are discriminated and demanded separate identity of their own. Marat Key writers proposed the term Dalit in 1960 in place of Achut or Harijan, as it means broken or scattered in Marathi. Harijan term was coined by Mahatma Gandhi, which means children of God. He appealed caste Hindus to change their attitude towards untouchable and use Harijan in place of Antajya. Ambedkar used Pad Dalit or Bahishkrit, excluded caste and even depressed caste in place of untouchables, but gradually moved to use the term Dalit. Harijan grew unpopular as it could not administer the change in attitude of upper castes. Dalit word emerged as a marker of political identity and assertion. When Dalit term got popularized and more frequently used. The term Dalit in past few decades have emerged as a powerful symbol of exploited masses who stood against the oppressive structure of upper caste and social discrimination. It signifies all those who were denied of the basic right of existence since time immemorial and those who fought to change the oppressive past and present. The Constitution of India 
has played an important role in the upliftment of dalits according to the schedule um, uh, our constitution the part 4 of the constitution gives the certain fundamental rights and these are the guarantees to the citizen article 52 states that no citizen shall on the ground only of religion race caste sex place of birth be discriminated with regard to an access to shop public restaurants hotels and public entertainment the use of wells tents bathing ghats roads and places of public resorts under article 154 of constitution the state is permitted to make any special provision for the advancement of any socially and educationally backward classes of citizen or the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes let us discuss the socio historical background of dalit movement it is very important it is very important to know the historical background socio historical background of any of the movement indian judiciary identified caste atrocity as a crime to curb violence faced by dalits in society and therefore clearly acknowledge that caste is the central to dalits servitude and operation society is stratified society based on the hierarchy and the differences the stratification on the basis of caste remains specific to indian context giving rise to exploitation of lower castes the relation between the varna and caste according to shrinivas is that caste is subsumed under this traditional concept of varna varna scheme has given distorted image of caste system where brahmins are at the top and the untouchable at the lowest according to him such hierarchy has not been the only reality but later version of varna scheme has established the supremacy of brahmins varna system is an hierarchical segmentation of society in four orders brahmin kshatriya vaishya and the rest were called shudras and untouchables as ati shudras who were outside the varna scheme the segmental society is based on the myth established in the society that the brahmin emerge from the mouth the kshatriya from the arms vaishyas from the thighs and shudras from the feet of the creator shrinivas writes that the group from ayogya archandal nishad and pulkasa also were outside the varna scheme in this fourfold system first three are twice born that is man passes through upanyana ceremony where sacred thread is donned to them whereas shudras and untouchable had no right to adorn that thread the distinctions 
brings ritual superiority of other three varnas over shudras and anti shudras the ritual superiority is based on the principle of brahmanic hindu religion a varna in rigveda means color and initially varna described just aryas and dasas that later become distinction between aryas and shudras each varna subsumes a large number of castes shudra category includes the largest number of non brahmanical castes since the ritual considerations create these four orders caste is seen as hierarchical system caste as an endogamous group based on the notion of purity and pollution that provides a lowest status to shudras or ati shudras and recognize untouchability as a social practices the caste atrocities are result of this order of hierarchy that has to be followed through differences in practice and religious rituals caste acquired political functions after constitutional provisions but the ritual aspects still remains the fundamental source of caste differentiation and hierarchy that is political functions that the caste acquires the political functions after constitutional provision because of provisions made in our constitution but still the ritual aspects still remains the same as it was prior it obtained a new meaning in british india and with the rise of western liberalism and grew stronger as an institution defining identity and community in independent india too dalits were seen to escape caste atrocities through conversions and sanskritization this sanskritization concept was given by shrinivas shrinivas says that problem of untouchables remained different from the other lower caste as they could not take the advantage of westernization or move up the ladder through sanskritization the concept of westernization was also given by the shrinivas so according to shrinivas this problem of untouchability remained different from the other lower castes the untouchable could not take the advantage of sanskritization or westernization the constitutional provisions brought changes in the status of untouchable in independent india but caste atrocities continue giving rise to near dalit mobilization untouchability is one of the aspects of indian society that has obstructed the growth and development of our country most importantly it compromises the dignity of human beings and deny them of their basic rights it is in practice 
that it has its roots in social values of hindu society based on varna and jati untouchability in india has resulted in poverty illiteracy servitude and serious contempt and exploitations within the society based on birth it is a practice that has oppressed many by keeping them outside the realm of caste hierarchy or at the lowest confining them to restricted occupation and considering them impure the impure occupations like leather work cleaning toilets and sewage tanks drains disposing uh, dead bodies etc are polluting in nature and those involved in dalit movement such occupations are only certain section of populations known as untouchables the practice of untouchability therefore restrict the social mingling with other members of the society and the impurity is socially expressed through the touch that acts as a pollutant that defiles the members of the higher caste group the touch the shadow the skin and even the voice of the lower caste all constitutes the source of pollution and have the potential to pollute the upper caste the punishment to defile the upper caste is severe and the cost and this cost the lives on most occasions can you understand even the touch the shadow the voice is considered to be to pollute the upper class and harijans can it cost the lives of the harijans they cannot move around freely participate in social life access the places of worship participate in festivals fairs community spaces this practice exists since the system of chaturvarna that is the four fold system of varna we discussed earlier that is brahma brahmin kshatriya vaishya and shudra system this system prevailed and persist due to existence of discriminatory caste system inherent in hinduism bhim rao ambedkar in 1948 define it untouchability is the notion of defilement pollution contamination and the ways and the means of getting rid of that defilement it is the caste of permanent hereditary strain which nothing can cleanse the orthodoxy of brahmins and their domination grew as it drew their legitimacy from the constructed argument that hinduism is the ancient religion of hindus brahmanic hinduism rests 
on the authority of Vedas and Brahmins and consolidations of social order based on Manu Smriti. The Bhagavad Gita expounds that every system has the has to fulfill their duties as prescribed in the re religious scripture and only then salvation can be attained after death. The karma theory flourished and manusmriti, the law book of Hindus, prescribed strict regulations regarding the castes. It endorsed untouchability and the system was rigorously followed by the priestly classes. The ideas of pollution attached to the caste provides the cultural identity to the higher caste in order to differentiate them from the lower caste in the hierarchy. The ritual of purity emerges from Brahmanic principle in which Shudras, women and untouchable are all impure. Within the society and for purity of caste, they have to be at the periphery of the social order and cannot share equality with other members of the society. The principle of ritual, uh, ritual purity embedded in Brahminic practices. This led to hegemony of upper castes and lower castes were denied of all social rights. The temple entry was banned for untouchables. The complete disempowerment of the lower caste and their servitude enhanced the domination, dominant position of upper caste, ritually in every respect. The higher positions in the caste gave them religious legitimacy to exploit them in the name of rituals. Dalit movement therefore stood to reject. The traditional Hindu social order based on untouchability, promoting socio-economic inequality, cultural supremacy of Brahminic caste and discriminating religious beliefs. Throughout the Indian history, Attempts have been made to reject Brahmanical supremacy. The bhakti and devotional cults between 10th and 13th century rebelled against caste hierarchy and Brahman domination, claiming devotion as the only way to the salvation in place of caste. The bhakti and devotional cults between 10th and 13th century rebelled against these caste hierarchies. The bhakti cult saints arose against Vedantic philosophy. The prominent saints were Mirabai, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Kabir Das, Sant Tukaram, Vallabhacharya, and many others. There were untouchable saints like Ravidas, Kanaka, Nandanara, and others who were also a part of Bhakti tradition. Temple entry to these untouchable saints was denied and Therefore, they continued their spiritual journey questioning Brahmanic rituals. 
bhakti religious tradition like sikhism buddhism also struggled against the hierarchically stratified hindu society where brahman or twice born enjoyed the highest power these moments provided philosophical basis and the ways to fight dominant hinduism for the new generation they laid the foundation for political aspirations rights and complete abandoning of hinduism social reform movements during the colonial period were an awakening struggle against the orthodox traditional socio religious practices to reform the society educated men and women worked for women's education widow marriage abolition of child marriage practice of sati pratha women's rights and freedom pandita ramabai tarabai tarabai shinde raja ram mohan roy and many others made contribution in reforming the society these also led to the reform of the religious traditions and modern thinkers challenged dogmatism of hindu religion modern indian social thinkers like mahatma gandhi rabindranath tagore swami vivekanand sri arbindo dayanand saraswati all these rejected the orthodox practices of hindu religion and gave rise to a new religious discourses they believed caste and untouchability is not core to hinduism with the development of printing technology this fostered a tool in hands of dalit leaders activist education become the central concern of the activists and there was a rise of marathi dalit public sphere in colonial india and later after independence pamphlets books and other material were produced for mobilization leaders like jyotiba phule b r ambedkar that is bhim rao ambedkar wrote extensively gol gol magri written in 1885 by phule jyotiba phule is one of his fundamental writings he explained his position on aryan aryans castes and hinduism he explained who were the shudras and then the untouchables were written by dr bhim rao ambedkar in his lifetime and later revolution and counter revolution in ancient india and other texts were published jyotiba phule 
published Gulmegli, in which he discussed his position about Aryans, caste, and Hinduism, and about Shudras. Then, Dr. Bhim Rao Ambedkar wrote The Untouchables. And then he wrote about revolution and counter revolution in ancient India. And there were many other texts of Bhim Rao Ambedkar. Ambedkar, uh, G.B. Warangal, mobilized Dalits for human rights through newspapers. So this newspaper, text, pamphlets played an important role in Dalit movement. Development of printing press mobilized the Dalit movement. The uh, Deen Bandhu and Sudharaka, Tarabai Shinde, in Satya Shodhak Samaj, wrote Stri Purush Tulna, that is the comparison of men and women, one of the foremost feminist documents in Marathi. Pandit Ramabai wrote in English on high caste women. On the other hand, Bansode was an educator and journalist who was associated with non-Brahmin movement. The rise of Marathi Dalit literature with the writers like Om Prakash Valmiki and others gave rise to strong cultural and literary tradition that shaped the movement in multiple ways. So, education and development of technology played an important role in Dalit movement. Various leaders worked for this movement, for the liberation of Dalits. There are various Dalit leaders and they worked for the liberation of this movement. We we'll discuss various Dalit leaders and the various phases of Dalit movement. Dalit movement in India saw different phases under the leadership of different leaders and different groups. Beginning from the Jyotiba Phule, the movement experienced consolidated struggle under the leadership of B.R. Ambedkar. And then the radical turn in nature of movement took place with organization such as Dalit Panthers, Functionalized Republican Party, Bahujan Samaj Party, and some Nexalite groups of low castes. Dalit movement saw the different phases, has gone through different phases under the leadership of different leaders. Jyoti Bafule was the one who initiated this movement under the leadership of B. R. Ambedkar? A radical turn in nature of movement took place. And then various organizations were formed 
organizations like Dalit Panthers, Bahujan Samaj Party, Functionalized Republican Party, and even some Nexalite groups were formed. These Nexalite groups are the results of Dalit movement. Mahatma Jyotiba Phule belongs to the OBC caste. Mali. He belonged to the caste Mali and this is an OBC caste. He was influenced by the wave of reform movement. He developed a strong resistance to upper caste oppression and worked amongst the poor, uneducated, untouchable, and women. He worked for the poor, for women, for uneducated, and for untouchable. He founded Satya Shodhak Samaj in 1875. Shaktya Shodak Samad was founded by Jyoti Bhak Phule in 1875. He started by establishing schools for untouchable boys and girls in Pune, where he belonged. As a social reformer, he had a vision that if Education is imparted to the poor untouchable. It will propound rationality to fight the priestly caste. So he understood the importance of education. Education is only way to fight the priestly caste. For this, he started schools for untouchable. He saw education as a major source, source of social change and argued that knowledge, education and science are weapons of advancement in hands of Poor. He recognized that untouchable <coughs> are more oppressed than lower castes, but called for their unity. As for him, they together constituted the exploited masses of India. He felt it is a necessity that Shudras and anti-Shudras need to think on their own and to recognize caste as a source of slavery and to think they should be educated. They should have knowledge. Then only they can think logically. And then only they can recognize that caste as a source of slavery. That is why he emphasized on the education of untouchables. Foley wrote about Aryan conquest. He writes about Aryan as cruel and violent invaders who upturned the egalitarian and prosperous society by violence and forged a mythology for a segmental and unequal society, not allowing access to its text by bringing this critic 
he opposed brahmanical orthodoxy and upper caste dominance and led a strong anti caste movement of non brahmin caste along with savitri bai savitri bai phule was his wife he stood against brahmanic patriarchy by raising voice against ritual brahmanic practices meant for widows savitri bai phule worked a lot for the upliftment or for the betterment of widows the plight of widows was pitiable amongst the brahmins and opening a house for widow and children they attempted to humanize the society by struggling to challenge the tyranny of brahmins so they worked on education education of untouchable they stood for widows and their children by 1920s and 30s several mobilization of peasants dalits and women started to grow under varying leadership and ideologies on phule's formulation of shudras and anti shudra anti caste anti brahmin anti hindu ideology struggle started to grow by lower section of society so in 1920s there were several mobilizations like dalit peasants and women started to grow under the varying leadership fully formed shudras anti shudras anti caste anti brahmins anti hindu ideology the non brahmin movement in maharashtra and tamil nadu the dalit movement in other states like punjab karnataka and up all highlighted phule's ideology about aryan conquest what was his ideology according to him aryans were violent were brutal they were responsible for this caste system in india aryans according to phule aryans were responsible for this varna hierarchy phule ideology was against the aryan and brahmin exploitation on the basis of religion so he was against aryan conquest as well as brahmin exploitation on the basis of religion the adi traditions claiming lineage to non aryan began to take place at several places kisan fagoji bansole was one of the prominent leader of adi movement in maharashtra in 1920 the new dalit movement emerged out of non brahmin struggles that claimed non aryan as original inhabitants and refused to acknowledge the supremacy of brahmanic tradition okay in 1920 a new movement emerged and 
they refused to acknowledge the supremacy of brahmanic tradition because according to them non aryans were the original inhabitants and this brahmanic supremacy is the result of aryan invasion these dalit movements were adhan in punjab adi hindu in up and hyderabad adi dravida adi andhra adi karnataka fully developed a universalistic ideology to counter the wave of hinduism that was also at its peak in 1920s and 30s so everyone followed the ideology of phule phule's ideology was that this caste system or this brahmanic system is given by or is imposed by aryans and aryans are not the native of this place and they refused to accept the supremacy of brahmins another sociologist who worked for the upliftment of dalit dr bhim rao ambedkar ambedkar received a us degree in law and returned to india he re, uh, he resigned from his state service in baroda and began as a professor at Sindham College in Bombay. It is here that he associated with Sahu Maharaj of Kolapur and began his journey to fight for the complete autonomy of Dalits. Bhim Rao Ambedkar arose as a Dalit leader on the foundation of non-Brahmin movement. dalit movement so second phase under him ambedkar insisted on the safe guard on the safe guarding the political rights of dalits he demanded separate electorate for the untouchables and not just the place in hindu social order In 1932, in Pune, Pet, he demanded reserved constituencies for Dalit. Ambedkar, in the period of 1930 and to uh, between uh, period between 1930 to uh, 1956, it was inclined. He was inclined. towards equal political rights and complete abolition of caste system beginning of the independent dalit movement can be traced when ambedkar formed indian labor party in 1936 ambedkar entered into politics with mahars forming bahishkrit hitkarni sabha that soon started to hold conferences in and around province the first dalit liberation movement mahar satyagraha was an outcome of the one of the conferences the decisions to drink water from the town tank resulted in the failed attempt but 
the message against Brahmanic suppression was loud and clear, and they burnt the copies of Manusmriti. Ambedkar emerged as the most powerful leader with a growing atmosphere of radical opposition to Congress and resentment of patients, workers, and other marginalized sections. Ambedkar sharpened his struggle against upper caste by strongly proposing the unity of workers, peasants, Dalits, non-Brahmins, and political alliance with non-Congress parties. According to Ambedkar, not only Brahmins, but capitalism and landlordism is also enemies of people. And he believed that not just the social, but economic liberation of Dalit is also mandatory for the improved social status in society. Adopted socialist framework and believed in state-guided industrial development. Ambedkar called for mass conversation to Buddhism because Hinduism is based on caste ideology and therefore represents inequality. He made a united front called Republican Party that worked along Sanyukta Maharashtra Samiti. He called for ideological, cultural and political struggle for transformation and social order. Periyar and the mass movement. The non brahmin movement in Tamil Nadu led to the rise of E.V. Ramaswamy Periyar, who belonged to a merchant family. Like Jyotiba and Savitri by Phule, there were others such as Ramasamy, Ramasamy Naikar in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. There was a Dalit movement known as Sri Narayan Dharma Pariplana movement or SNDP movement. Mahatma Gandhi defended Varnashram Dhan. He contested it strongly and declared that if India has to gain freedom, it has to dissolve Congress, Hindu religion, and Brahman domination. Like Jyotiba Phule, Periyar formed a self-respect league in 1926. This league professed radical nationalism and stood against the caste and religion. Periyar's radicalism, anti-caste and anti-religion views were expressed in his radical speeches, giving new orientation to non-Brahmin movement. After Ambedkar, several movements arose under the banner of different parties. A radical turn was experienced by coming of Dalit Panthers who fought in collaboration with all parties that were committed to, uh, to abolish caste and class politics in the country. It was a militant organization of Dalit youth that was born in Bombay in 1972. They claimed that the entire state machinery in post-independent India was dominated by feudal ideology and interests and such ideologies based on their religion have deprived Dalits of their rights as individuals and power, wealth and status within society. Aligned with several voices across the country, they arose against corruption, poverty, state domination, marginalization of weaker section, 
Dalit Panthers gave a new direction to Dalit movement while widening its horizon. That's all for today. In our next lecture, we'll discuss about our tribal movements and feminist movements.